I'm starting this build with a four inch tabletop table saw from Harbor Freight. Uh, it uses basically a sewing machine motor and it spins at 14,000 RPMs is what it's advertised for. Uh, it should work perfect for cutting carbon shafts. I started by disassembling the whole thing. I really only wanted the motor, the switch, the power cable, the th things like that out of the unit itself. Yeah, I figured it'd just be too difficult to make a uh, rest for the carbon shafts to rest on and to be able to spin them up against the blade. By cutting off the the switch, I knew I was gonna have to solder, or do some electrical connections, but that's no big deal. The uh, the motor mounts with two mounting holes, um, very simply. Uh, you just screw it to whatever um, surface you're using. So I started with a, uh, I believe it was a two by three inch piece of angle iron, um, cut to length. I cut it to where I would have enough room to cut up to 36 inches, even though most stock aero shafts are only 32 inches. Uh, I just wanted to give myself plenty of room. So I marked for my holes, um, drilled them out to mount it. I normally use a, a uni bit, universal bit, step bit, Christmas tree bit, whatever you want to call it, just because it's easy. You don't have to think about what size hole you need at the end of the day. So that's what I used mounted it up I kind of slotted the front hole so that I could adjust how it was level relative to the chassis itself which is very important to make sure you get a square into your arrow shaft once you cut it the next issue is giving the blade enough clearance uh, by creating a slot in this angle and so what I did here is marked where the blade was gonna ride and where I needed to move material. You'll see later how I changed this up a little bit and I actually ended up making this particular piece of angle iron fairly weak. But you'll see now here is the slotted piece of metal. The blade rides in there good. The blade for this motor is a four inch blade. That's what it comes with from Harbor Freight out of the package. It comes with a wood cutting blade and a diamond blade and I'm using the diamond blade here. I haven't cut a ton of arrows with it, but the diamond blade seems to do just fine. Here I'm drilling holes for some rubber feet to attach to it to help keep it stationary on the countertop because that 14,000 RPMs with that little motor um, tends to make the, the whole thing want to walk a little bit. So if I had to change one thing here right off the bat is I'd try to figure out a way to either make the whole unit heavier if you aren't concerned about transporting it or find a way to throttle down the motor using like a dimmer or a um, so, something like that. And so now I'm making the guard for the blade out of a piece of aluminum bar stock. I think it's about an eighth inch thick and maybe a little thicker than that, but it's very easy to just bend by hand and uh, there's no rhyme or reason to the shape I'm going for. It's just I'm kind of organically trying to make something work to where I can fasten it to the chassis so that it's fixed and the arrow has a good place to ride, but it's also protecting the user from the, the blade because you definitely don't want to touch that blade while it's spinning. This is one area that I think could definitely be improved is figuring out a way to make one of these that perhaps conceals the blade a bit better. Um, here I painted it black and used the little guard, uh, the plastic guard. You can see it in the upper right corner is the, that actually came in the package with the table saw. So you can use that piece out of the kit and just fasten it there. That just provides a little more face protection when you're cutting um, at the orientation i have it the blade would be cutting downwards against your arrow you can see the shelf eye bent over as well that is where the arrow will ride when it's rolling up into the blade and 
it actually works pretty well in this orientation. However, you do have to be mindful that there's nothing to catch the arrow from moving past the shelf that you're resting it on and moving further in towards the rotational axle of the blade, if you will. And so if you get to that point where the arrow has moved past the shelf, then uh, you're gonna be fighting that or you're gonna shut the whole saw down to pull the arrow out. So here, what I did, that was an original wood block that I used. Um, I'm gonna make another one later in the video that I'll show more, more footage of with locating the, the hole for the knock to go into. This was just me throwing together a little bracket for the switch to fix to. I wanted to use the switch out of the package just because it was, it was simple. Uh, I figured I could just bend a piece of, uh, this is actually a piece of aluminum from uh, an old, like a storage compartment of a, an old John boat. And so I just cut this little weird cross section out, bent it, made the switch fit in there. And uh, I ended up mounting the switch in place. Uh, I painted it, not real particularly. Here's the, this is the wood block, the, the one I actually end up using. And uh, so what I, what I do is make a slot. Um, this is a hole where a furniture nut is what I call it would go. It's usually used in a place where you'd have a, uh, a spot where you can't access the back you can just access the side and the nut would be like a cylindrical shape with a like a flathead end on one of the ends and you can run a, a little thumb turn peg in and tighten that thing down in place and so here I'm measuring to make sure that the height and the distance away from the backbone of my saw's chassis matches where the shelf would be and where the shelf would approach the blade if there were an arrow on it um, don't be afraid to take a little extra time to do that part because it is important to make sure that that is done as close as possible for to make sure your arrow shaft is square when you cut it here i'm soldering back the connections um, between the the switch and the motor itself um, pay attention to what goes where it is really simple if you have any electrical experience I ended up having to solder back to the switch because I didn't have little bitty connectors that would fit the terminals on that switch but pay attention to where they go and it should be pretty easy with any electrical experience I set this up to where I could use the screw, one of the screws for the for the motor. So here it is all set up. Um, switch flips on. You can see how it kicks back. Again, it's. I feel like making it heavier would improve the whole thing. So, um, so I actually ended up making a whole new chassis. Um, this is two pieces of four inch angle welded together. Um, to make a upside down T shape, if you will. I figured that added plenty of weight and plenty of rigidity for this motor. So again, go through all the same steps, mounting the motor. I'm not planning on this thing being very portable to where I would take it with me anywhere. This would be kind of a at home, uh, this is my everyday kind of unit. It is pretty heavy and cumbersome, but it stays stationary in place when that motor's running much better. I did uh, take quite a bit of time to get everything lined up the same way I had it on the other. I got some bigger rubber feet to mount to the bottom of it to give it some, some help in staying place when the motor's running, even though it this one doesn't vibrate and move near as much as the other the other setup did. I had to change up my guard arm over the top a little bit 
I hoped I could reuse the original one and just bend it to a different shape, but it just wasn't quite working how I wanted it to, so I ended up bending a new one. And drilling some holes in the bottom of it to put that in place. I used the same clear guard out of the package for the table saw. I just figured it was easy enough to use something that it came with. I took a different approach with the revised chassis and made a separate aero shelf where I bent it the opposite direction so there would be a kind of a backstop for the aero shaft to roll up against after it was cut. Um, it also allowed it to where once it is cut you can still continue to rotate it and just make sure that it's clean um, of any burrs or anything and uh, I made it to where the blade would run through the middle of that shelf to just add to a little bit more precision there when you're cutting and so after that I cleaned up all my holes and uh, took it up to just go paint it clean it up a little bit and then coming back into mounting it one thing I do want to add is I have some abrasive wheels that I ordered to fit the same motor. I haven't tried them yet. The diamond wheel seems to be doing just fine, but I know there is some discussion about the differences, um, advantages or disadvantages in cutting with a diamond wheel versus an abrasive wheel. I haven't gotten to do my own comparison between the two, but I do have abrasive wheels and I am gonna, I do plan to try the difference, um, but I, you could take it from me that the diamond wheel that comes with the saw seems to do just fine for any normal carbon shafts that I've cut. I haven't cut any aluminum shafts or any of the, like the FMJ type of shafts on it yet. And so assembling it, I just had kind of a variety of screws. I think the majority of the machine screws and nuts that I used were a number eight metric thread. It, but this is kind of an irrelevant topic. You can use whatever, whatever thread and length screws you want that work. Um, even the chassis as well. This is just what I ended up using. If you have some, uh, some scrap metal that would fit the bill perfect, um, you know, don't be afraid to use that. This is just something I had at my disposal that uh, I was willing to use. Um, despite it was a little heavy but it seems to do a great job in making a stable platform for this saw to be made out of I also got this adhesive tape measure just on Amazon I think it was like less than 10 bucks just to provide a reference for when you move your wood block to shorten or lengthen the arrow that you're cutting and one thing that I would like to really do is make a better pointer. You can see right there that I made a pointer just out of some bent wire, but it would be better to have something more like a, a flat piece of metal, for instance, or something with an arrow, just because that wire is pretty flexible. So if you do go the route of using a wire pointer, I'd definitely recommend double checking how long your arrow is gonna be before you go and cut a whole dozen put put one in there and mark where the saw blade or the the right side of the saw blade is at and measure that with a separate tape measure just to double check that you're good depending on how precise you're trying to be so here is a, a little demonstration of how you would go use it you could you just loosen that thumb turn knob or that knob and kind of set it up where you want it. I'm just mocking it up for a 20 inch arrow just because it fits in the frame of my camera here okay. And here I'm just cutting a shaft that Gold Tip makes and that they've sold through like Bass Pro Shop. And so when you flip it on it takes a second to get up to speed but not very long. As I'm cutting, I'm rotating in, continuing to rotate through the whole cut, 
and after the cut a little bit, pull it out, flip it off, and there you go. I don't see any issues with the quality of the cut, and I hope that this portrays through the video okay. I'll have some pictures at the end also to demonstrate it a little better, but when I went to use my G5 aero squaring tool, it took hardly any turns and I had a perfectly square arrow. So the results are acceptable for me. I would have no hesitation in cutting any of my arrows in the future on this saw, whether this is my permanent saw forever or not. Uh, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.